Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon. As you can tell, I love making squishies at the moment, and you might remember a preview of this DIY from my last video here. If you haven't seen that one yet, then be sure to check out 33 Squishy Hacks, which I've linked down below. This tutorial features Bongo Cat, which is an internet meme created by the Twitter users Stray Rogue and Ditsy Flamer. Other people have created hundreds of Bongo Cat clips, which you've probably seen online, although I'm pretty sure that this is the first three dimensional squishy version. To get started, I'm going to make a solid model of Bongo Cat using polymer clay. You can make any design here, but I'd recommend not using more than a quarter of a block of clay. Since the squishies are made from Hitohata gel, which is fairly expensive, you can make a lot more if you keep your original piece fairly small. First, I'm smoothing out the clay and then sculpting it into a cat head shape. This actually reminds me a lot of my very first latte art cat tutorial, so please leave a comment down below if you actually remember watching that video when it came out. Now I'm attaching two small pieces for arms and then smoothing out the gaps using a toothpick. The important detail here is to curve the tops of the arms so it looks like the paws are bending over the edge of a table. And make sure the arms are only attached to the body near the base, because having this tiny gap here allows you to move the hands around once it's been turned into a squishy. Now, bake your piece in the oven according to packet instructions. For Fimo clay, this is 30 minutes at 110 degrees centigrade or 230 degrees Fahrenheit. The secret to a good squishy is to make sure that your polymer clay version is as smooth and as symmetrical as possible. If necessary, you can always use very fine sandpaper to get rid of fingerprints or other small imperfections. Next, I'm going to make a mold using two-part silicone putty. Mix equal amounts of both colors together and then press your piece inside. Gently apply pressure from all sides without moving the clay. I realized that the pointy ears in this design had a tendency to get pushed out of the silicone. If there's only a very small hole like this, then you can cover it up with tape and it won't affect the Hitohata gel. However, if you end up with a very big gap, then you have to remake the mold using more putty. When I first used Hitohata gel, I was a bit frustrated by how unpredictable it can be. However, since then, I've discovered a good method where I'd make several molds at once and then fill each one with slightly different ratios of resin. This way, one of the squishies will definitely turn out well, and it's actually quite a nice surprise to see which one is going to be. So first, I'm going to measure out the two liquids in a ratio of 3 to 1. Then I'm adding a tiny bit more hardener, literally just a few drops, since I find that Hitohata gel has a tendency to undercure, so you're more likely to get good results by adding a little bit more. For this DIY, I also want to try adding color. This is a special oil-based paint created just for Hitohata gel. It won't affect the curing process like water-based inks or powdered pigments. I'm adding a tiny bit of this to make a white bongo cat, and the difference is very subtle but effective. The original resin looks more like yellowy condensed milk, and the paint gives it a white creamy color. Now I'm mixing up two more batches of Hitohata gel, and I'm adding a tiny bit less of hardener to one of them, and a tiny bit more to the other. This might seem like a microscopic difference, but you'll see that it actually has a significant effect on the finished squishies. I left these to cure for several days, and I was really happy to see that all three turned out well. 
Some of you might remember this from my Instagram stories, where I asked you to guess what it was. The answer, of course, is Bongo Cat. Although lots of people chose Neku Atsumi, which was pretty close. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, then be sure to check out my account at Macaroon. If the squishy sticks your finger like this, then you'll need to use a bit of cornstarch or talcum powder when taking it out of the mold. I was quite pleased with how these molds turn out since there aren't any air bubbles and the arms are also well defined. Here you can see a comparison of the different textures compared to the amount of hardener that I added. And lastly, we just need to paint on some details. As usual, I'm using acrylic paint mixed with white glue. Since the details are so tiny here, I'm actually going to use the tip of a pin as a paintbrush instead of a toothpick or eyeliner pen. Then I use some red and white paint to make paws. And now our bongo cat squishies are done. I'm so happy that all three turned out nicely since there's usually one which breaks or one that doesn't set properly. To complete the meme, I'm going to draw some instruments for the cats to play. This notepad is the perfect height so the paws actually look like they're poking over the top of a table. I'm simply using some black fine liners and colored pencils for the artwork. If you look up Bongo Cat on YouTube, then you'll see all the different instruments or singing versions that people have made. This DIY is an unusual combination of 2D and 3D work, which was great fun to make. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!